ourselves from all filthiness and perfect holiness in the fear of God. Just as King Josiah, he started to cleanse the whole nation of all the filthiness that was around him. That's what we need to do in our lives. We need to take stock where we're at in him. Is there anything at all that's contradictory to his word and what he wants for me? And if there is, then we need to take, you need to choose whether you're going to take a stand or whether you're not. And just be there. If you're not going to take a stand, you know what the outcome is. You know what the consequences are. Right. But we need, to, we need to be bold. We need to stand on it. We can't be back and forth wishy-washy. In Romans, the Bible says we are to present ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service for what he's done for our lives, what he's done through us. We're to be a living sacrifice daily. 1 John 2, 3-6, don't. I'm almost done, guys. <laughs> Joe's smiling. He likes it. <laughs> now, by this, we know that if we know him, if we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also walk just as he walked. Amen. We are to walk just as Jesus. Jesus is our perfect example. If you're obedient to the Lord, you will be blessed, it says. I've got a couple more scriptures here. Psalm 1, 1 and 2 and Psalm 119. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. It says right there, if you do not hang, out, hang around sinners, if you do not practice the things that they are doing, and you meditate in the law day and night, his delight is in you, and you are, your delight is in the law of the Lord. Next one, please. Psalm 119. If you ever read that whole chapter, it's humongous. <laughs> Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart, with their whole heart. They also do not, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Amen? Amen? No iniquity. None whatsoever. God wants to use this body of Christ. He wants to use you for great things. He has plans for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, Oh, the plans I have for you. He has plans that he wants you to do, what he wants us to do as a body. And if we're not obedient to him, then things will not be done. We need to take a stand in all things. If we continue to be disobedient to him, we continue to be wishy-washy, we're just going to be just another church and you'll be just another Christian blending in. That mm -hmm. settles for something far less than what God has planned for you in your life, <coughs> the path that he has for you. And I'm closing. You might ask yourself today, how will I know if I'm aiming for obedience and I'm taking a stand in my life, ask yourself that today. You'll know by the cost that you're willing to pay for that. What is your Christian life costing you? It'll cost you something to learn about Christ, but it's going to cost you everything to live for Him and, and to Him and to His ways. So where do you stand today? Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable blending in? Are you comfortable not standing out when you're around others, whether it be the workplace, whether it be at school for you young kids? If you have any hint of impurity in your life whatsoever, you're not pay paying the full price of true obedience to the Lord. If there's any type of impurity, any type of hindrance. In Matthew 15, it says, These people draw near to me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me. That's powerful for me, just with the worship part. In vain they worship me. If we show up here and our heart is not right, and our heart...
heart is not after him, we worship him in vain. That is us if we continue to be disobedient to him, to his word, and we fail to stand up for him. The night before he went to the cross, he knelt down with his disciples and he prayed all night long. He sweated drops of blood, it says in the Bible, the book of Luke, I believe. The next day he went to that cross for us so that we could have everlasting life. Amen? Amen. He went to the cross, he died, and he rose again so that we might be forgiven of our sins. If you have a doubt in your heart or mind that you are ready to meet God today, then today is a day that you can settle it with him. You don't have to walk out them doors and doubt it any longer. Right. Whatsoever. You will stand before him and say, well, I never had an opportunity to call on your name. Yes, you do today. Today and probably other days before then. <coughs> Repent of your sins and say, Lord, I need you as a Savior. I need you, Father. Mm -hmm. God is your Father. and He purchased you with the price of his blood. and He expects obedience in your walk. Just as you believe your command should be enough for your children, God believes that his command for your obedience should be enough for you. We tell our kids to do something. I know I do all the time. <laughs> Don, boy. Well, yeah. is like he's we tell our kids to do something, and when I do, I expect them to do it. I expect them to obey me. God is the same way. He is our Father. He tells that he gives us a whole book of what we should do, and he expects us to do it. Yeah. And if we don't read it, we don't know what to do. Right. Right. If we're not here at church, we don't know what to do. If we don't fellowship with other believers, we don't know what to do. Yeah. Obedience is hard, and it requires humility, and it requires meekness. Very rare elements in people's lives today in this world. If you're not obedient to him and to his voice, to his word, to eliminate every evil thought, any evil desire of your heart, then that attitude is leaving you open and vulnerable for the enemy time and time again. We need to guard our hearts. We need to start asking ourselves, how holy can I be? Not, how far can I go? Right. That's right. Am I willing to take a stand for him today? We need to ask ourselves that. Yeah. Follow him and serve him and obey him at whatever the cost. And I'm closing. If everybody could please bow your head and close your eyes this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray today, Lord, I thank you. I pray that you let your fire consume anything in me is not of you. Make this your cry today from your heart. Any thought that isn't pleasing to you or that doesn't glorify your name, Lord. Any evil, selfish desire that is within me, as David says. Any wicked intention of my heart, consume it, Lord. I don't want to live that way. I can't do it in my own strength. Lord, please deal with any unforgiveness that I might have that I might be holding and harboring in my heart towards anyone, Lord. I release them to you and to your judgment. Father, I pray you bless them and cause your face to shine upon them in your favor for them and their family today. Today I repent of any hidden sin in my life, any sin that is revealed to me through your Holy Spirit that is separating me from you in any way. Please blot out my transgressions and cover any iniquity that I have, Lord, so I can stand before you blameless. Wash me as white as snow, Father. Lord, help me to be obedient in all things at all times. Give me your grace, Father, to empower me to live by your standards and by your commandments. Help me, Lord, to take a stand for you and to live my life with boldness whatever the cost, no matter how I'm persecuted, no matter how I'm looked at, give me boldness, Lord, in the walk. Anything worldly that has the ability to hinder me and my walk 
and separate me from you in any way, please remove it from my life today. I surrender my heart and my life to you. Have your way in me, Jesus. Have your way. I want you to take a moment and just meditate on the Lord. Let him speak to your heart. Any thought that you have is of the Lord. He is speaking to your heart right now. Just listen to him. Everybody's going to be different. Ask him, Lord, reveal anything to me in my life that displeases you in any way, Lord. Maybe you already know of a sin or some hindrance that keeps you from being fully obedient to him. You knew it before you come in the door today. Maybe he just revealed it to you. And it's costing you from fully following him with all your heart. Maybe you're running the race, walking on his path. But every once in a while, the things of this world and people you hang out with, whatever the situation is, it's causing you to drift off that path, even if it's just for a moment. Maybe today you're like, well, I know I haven't been obedient to him, but I don't know him. You have an opportunity, like I said, to call upon his name today, to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Maybe you're thinking, well, maybe next time I show up, I'll do it. There might not be a next time. Our life is a vapor. We, we're here one day and gone the next. You see it multiple dead times just with the children and, and people that pass away in our lives. You might not even make it to Route 6 and an accident happened today. You do not know when your time is. Don't take that chance. If you're not right with God, get right with Him today. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you and to rob you of the greatest gift that God has given us, salvation through Jesus Christ. Today, if you do not know him as Lord and Savior, I invite you to call upon his name. It will be the greatest thing that you've ever done in your life, the most important decision that you have to make. In Romans, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him, the dead. You will be saved. Today you can be a new creation in Jesus Christ. If that is you today, the Lord is speaking to your heart and you know that he's calling you. I ask you to be bold and just raise your hand this morning. Amen. I see those hands. Hallelujah. Maybe you're saved, but you've wandered so far from him that you can't hear his voice or you can't feel his presence like you have before. Come back home to his arms today. You've compromised and you failed to take a stand. Today you are going to take a stand in him. Rededicate yourself to him. Make a new covenant with him. Lord, I want you. I need you in my life. I follow you. We all have a loved one, a husband, a wife, a child, a family member, a friend, or even an enemy who's not saved. They need a healing. They need strengthening. I encourage you to come forward today and intercede for them. So I invite you to stand your feet. I invite you to come now. If you give your heart and life to Christ for the first time today, I invite you to come. 